Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. In today's episode, I wanted to talk to you guys about braided lines and leaders, both fluorocarbon and mono. Now, in today's episode, I just wanna talk about my own personal experiences. I've had the opportunity to try a number of braids over the years and just talk about you know some of the features that I like in braids when I'm picking them out these days, um, as well as some of the brands that have really worked well for me and some that haven't. So, you know, I've got a couple of different braids here in front of me. There's a bunch that are on my rods and reels at the moment um, that I haven't got any boxes for. So I'm gonna put up a couple of photos um, from Adam's website or from Google that I've been able to just pull down just to show you guys um, what I really like and what's worked well for me in the past. So, you know, there's just so many brands out there on the market and it's really often quite confusing and um, intimidating for a lot of you know new punters especially to uh to look at you know which brand should i pick why should i choose this braid over that braid and um, i just wanted to you know shoot this video just to give you guys a bit of an idea of what i look for when i'm picking out new braid especially in that brim to light snapper mile away market and even for the bass guys i think this will be really really helpful so starting off with braided line and talking about what's really worked well for me in the past and probably one of the most popular braids that i still have on my reels today is the uniteka aureka 2. so this is probably a, a slightly older line now it's been around for quite a number of years and i really got onto this line when i was sponsored by frogley's offshore probably a good eight nine years ago now um, and it's still a line that i purchase and run today so um, it's a four strand line. I've run this in 10 pound diameter. So from memory, this is the 0.8 PE 10 pound um, breaking strain that they do. Look, it's it's not the most rounded, most supple line in the world, but it, um, it really sits well on the spool. It ties great knots. It doesn't fray really easily either. Um, it holds its color. It's one of the multicolored lines. So every five to 10 meters, the color changes. I find that works really well, especially when you're sight casting or watching the line for any ticks in the line. That line's really quite easy to see. Um, and it's just a really good all round line. It's not the most expensive, but it's also not the cheapest. Probably coming in around that $50 mark if you can find it online these days. A lot of stores are out of stock of it though. So again, I haven't got a box here, unfortunately, but I just wanted to talk about the Uniteka Aureka 2. I've probably still got that on six of my brim outfits um, here behind me. So if you can get your hands on that one, that's a really good line. In terms of look, overall features that I look for these days, I'm looking for quite a round profile on my braid. And I'm also looking for the thinnest diameter for a particular breaking strain. So, and this is a topic that's probably come up on the ABT website or Facebook page rather in recent times. And a lot of questions have been asked about brands and um, different questions and specifications and characteristics of braided lines. For myself personally, I like to run at least 10 pound breaking strain. Um, and the reason for that is the te you know the technological improvements in braided lines these days just means you don't need to run a really thin line. You don't need to get a four or a six pound line um, by running a ten pound um, you know braided line. You're able to use that braid or that outfit for a variety of other species, whether it's you know freshwater for big trout or bass, um, and in the salt water for brim, for snapper, for flathead, for salmon, whatever it might be and you're not really sacrificing casting distance anymore by running that um, that heavier line because it's just so thin these days and that round profile doesn't hold a lot of water doesn't dig in like some of the older flatter lines did like the fire lines of old um, so the rounded rounder lines in that 8 to 12 strand um, technology they really sit quite well on the spool they cast a long way they tie really good knots um, and what I also look for is I'm not looking for a line that's completely supple and not too stiff. So, you know, ideally you want to pick up some lines in the store and just have a look at how that line falls in your hand or sits in your hand. What you're really looking for is, yeah, once again, a line that's not too supple, but not too stiff. That way you get the best line management, less wind knots. It's easy to tie knots and it casts really well. So those are the types of characteristics that I look for in a new braided line.
Now I've spoken about the Unitica Aurica 2. My second most favorite line is the Mega Bass Dragon Call in the fluoro green color. Um, a lot of you will be familiar with this line. It's it's a very popular line among some of the brim anglers in Australia, but it's very hard to get. It's probably been discontinued for a number of years now as well. Um, and some of the characteristics that I just talked about with you know the lines that I look for or the characteristics that I look for new braids, that Mega Bass line really had in spades. It was an eight strand braid. It was super thin for its um, breaking strain and for its strength. And it was just super easy to see with that fluoro green color. Unfortunately, it's one that we can't get again. But what I do have here is the Daiwa more than 12 strand braid in 16 pounds. So that when the time comes for me to replace those Mega Bass braids on my two Brimbuster Brawlers, this is the line that will be going to replace them. Both 150 meter spools, uh, 0.8 of a PE in 16 pound breaking strain. I can't get the exact diameter in millimeters, but just from visually inspecting the line, it is very thin for 16 pounds. So once again, I'll be able to use that in a number of different situations, and I'm really looking forward to giving this a try. And finally, one of the other lines that I really wanted to give a special mention to is the Torre Seabass PE Power Game. So I've just got a little photo of it here. It's a snapshot from Adam's website at fishing.com.au. It's an absolutely fantastic line. I was able to pick it up with one of my old exists that I purchased a number of years ago, and it's been an absolutely flawless line to run. Uh, I'm really enjoying it. It's got all the characteristics of the Mega Bass line that I just spoke about previously with the Mega Bass Dragon Call. Um, unfortunately, it is a white color. So for me personally, it's a little bit harder to see than some of the fluoro colors or than some of the multicolored braids in uh, in the Unitika range that I talked about previously. So that's probably the only downside in terms of that Torre braid, but otherwise it ties amazing knots. It's nice and supple. The line management's fantastic on the reel. I haven't had a single uh, wind knot throughout my whole ownership of that line. I've probably used it for a good two, three years now and haven't had a single issue with it. So. If I am gonna be replacing that, I'm definitely gonna be replacing it with the same Torre Power PE um, Seabass. So another, another great line to uh, keep an eye out for and consider as part of your next purchase. And finally, I'm just quickly gonna mention two other brands that I'm really looking forward to trying. The first one is the Gosen. So I have actually have a secondhand reel incoming at the moment with the Gosen casting braid, which is the eight strand. I'm actually gonna put a photo of that up here as well. And finally, the last one is an Aussie made brand with um, Tasline. So Marty from Burley Pro, as we all know, Marty's also now one of the operators of Tasline with Frank. And uh, looking at the specs of Tasline, the line looks fantastic. A lot of the reviews and a lot of the guys that use it rave about it. So it has all the characteristics that I spoke about earlier as well. The only downside there being it's a white in color. So it might be a little bit harder to see for some of those um, you know, visual bites and little plucks in the line. But if you're getting a really good line, um, you know, with some of those great characteristics, it's nice and round, it's easy to cast, it's got a great thin diameter for its breaking strain, then I think I can overlook the, uh, the white color. Very similar to the Torre. If it's a great line, you just put up with it um, and you, uh, you get on with the job. So the Gosen, I'm really looking forward to trying. That should be coming uh, this week at some stage as well as the uh, the Taz line with, um, with Marty and Frank. So keep an eye out for those two products as well. See how you go. Let me know your thoughts as well on what your favorite braided lines are. Um, there's so many out in the market, you know, with the Burley, uh, Berkeley products these days, the X9, the X5 products, um, the Daiwa J Braid, J Braid brand. There's just a plethora of different products, but I wanted to talk about the ones that have really worked for me. Um, one product that I haven't been a huge fan of, personally speaking, is the Sunline Castaway PE, uh, especially that blue color. This could have been just due to the diameter um, that was on the reel that I purchased. So again, the, the caveat here or the disclaimer here is that I purchased a secondhand reel which had Castaway already on it. It felt really quite thick, quite ropey um, in texture and appearance. So I don't know if it was a little bit frayed, a little bit old, 
but that was just my own personal experience with the Castaway PE. And the reason why I've got a spool of it here is it was something that we won at a recent tournament. So I think I'll be moving that guy on. And now we're gonna talk about monofilament and fluorocarbon lines and spending the majority of the time talking about fluoro lines and what I personally like to use, again, and some of the uh, characteristics and features of those fluoro lines. Really quickly, I'm gonna to touch on mono and the only times that I use mono is when I'm fishing surface lures and predominantly when I'm fishing for bass. Um, I prefer to use a monofilament line with surface lures just because the mono floats. A lot of these, all the fluorocarbons are a lot denser, so they tend to sink and they're a lot heavier um, in terms of their characteristics. So the fluorocarbon lines will sink and will drag the nose down of some of those surface lures. So it's really important when you are using uh, really fine, small stick baits or even bent minnows, um, the action can be improved by using a light monofilament line, four, six, eight pound, whatever you're comfortable with. A lot of the times I'll just be running eight pound monofilament for uh, cicadas, for big bents, for uh, mega bass dog X's and dog X juniors. Um, so some of the lines that have worked really well for me, Sunline and uh, Uni Tika. So that's the monofilaments out of the way. Now, in terms of fluorocarbon, I'll talk about one brand that's by far and away my favorite, but the disclaimer here is it's anything above six pound, and that is the Uni Tika. So Uni Tika has by far and away has the best breaking strain to diameter ratio. Wow. So in front of me, I've got two examples where the Uni Tika line really just shines above some of the others. So one example here is the FC Rock from Sunline. I've got the five pound. So the diameter of this five pound is 0.19 of a millimeter. I have the Uni Tika here, and this is the Aga, Uni Tika Aga, by the way, for those that don't know, and the Diameter of the six pound Uni Tika is 0.185. So it's a thinner diameter for a heavier braking strain. The other example is if I've got a Yamatoyo seven pound and a very similar situation. So the seven pound is 0.22 of a millimeter and the Uni Tika eight pound is 0.219. So 0.22 versus 219 very very minor but we're talking about a seven pound line and an eight pound line and the differences are very similar as you go up in breaking strain as well the uh the uni taker all the way up to 17 pound i i use um, it's really shown above and beyond some of the others um, one issue that i have had with this stuff is in full pound the full pound breaking strain the line has had a tendency to snap especially when tying knots so it's not a line that I'll use in four pound. I will absolutely love it in six, eight, 14, 17, but in those lighter line classes, I stick with the Sunline FC Rock, um, Sunline Small Game FC2. So this is two and a half pound. I've got some three pound here and some four pound. So two and a half, three, four, um, five. I've had around for a long time. I'll use this on pre-fishers, for example, or social situations but in tournaments I'll often pick up the six pound instead of the five pound um, and one of the other brands that we really like dad and I is the Yamatoyo fluorocarbon um, it's a slightly softer fluorocarbon in terms of its nature and where it sits on the hard to soft sort of scale where a lot of these brands will often indicate how uh, how hard or how soft a line is and generally speaking if you're using straight through fluorocarbon on a reel, you want a nice soft fluorocarbon so that it sits nicely and you get better line management. If you had a really hard fluorocarbon, which was probably more suited to a leader, you could um, you could liken it to like an old telephone cord. So try and spring off your, your reel, try and spring off the spool. It's not something that would sit well on a uh, straight through application. You're looking for something like a, a really soft fluorocarbon for a straight through um, yeah, situation. But in terms of leaders, I try and go somewhere in the middle of that soft to hardness scale. I don't look at it too much when I'm just looking at a, at a pure leader, but if I was to run straight through fluoro, I'd be looking for a soft one. Um, in Victoria, so straight through fluorocarbon isn't something that I personally use. I've tried it twice, especially in the Gippsland systems, 
and it's it's just not something that I enjoy fishing with. It's too spongy. I really enjoy the feel of braided lines with a fluorocarbon leader, and I think for the type of fishing that I do, that's what suits me the best. So again, six to eight pound leader, Unitika Agar. Anything less than six, your twos, threes, and fours, really check out the Sunline products. They're absolutely fantastic. In those lighter breaking strains, their diameter to uh, breaking strain ratio is fantastic and on par with a lot of the other brands. So for me, in the light stuff, it's Yamatoyo and Sunline, and in the heavier products, it's always the Uni Tika. So check this out at your local stockist or online at fishing.com.au with Adam. Hey everyone, just quickly before I wrap up the video, now you may notice that um, had a bit of a wardrobe change. So this is actually the next day after I filmed this particular braid and leader video. Um, I put up my video of my rod and reel walkthrough and had some great questions come in from Peter Tilly. So thank you very much, Peter. So Peter was wondering how, or some of the tip, tips and techniques around spooling up braided line onto these reels, um, as well as the length of the leader that I run. So this was very important and something that I didn't touch on in either of the two videos. So one of the quick tips that I'll give you guys is some of the braided lines come with a diameter on clearly visible on the packaging, whereas some such as the more than from Daiwa do not. So the Daiwa, for example, I know it's 150 meters of 0.8 PE and uh, the Siglon is, 100, what is this, 160, 150 meters as well, but it's 0.153 millimeters. So, and also 0.8 of a PE. So I know the PE rating and the diameter of the line. And on this particular one, I don't know the uh, actual diameter, just the PE rating. Now on a lot of the spools, so the Exist spool, for example, has a PE rating and a diameter rating as a guide to how much line can be put on each one of these. Now, as a very general guide, don't take this as complete gospel, but on a 2003 or a 2004 size spool from Daiwa, you can get about 130 meters of 0.6 to 0.8 PE line, which is your eight to 12 pound braided line, especially some of the new stuff that I was talking about in that eight strand um, quality. Something that I wanna talk about as well, something that's really important when you are spooling up is make sure that you don't over spool your line you don't want the line to be sitting really, really flush with the outside of the spool. That means it's overfilled. So what's gonna happen is you're gonna have a lot of line management issues. Braid will start falling off. Once you make casts and you're trying to put braid back on, it's not gonna sit on nice and tight um, and you're gonna get end up with a lot of wind knots. So it's better to be slightly under spooled by a couple of millimeters as opposed to being over spooled. And from a actual sort of visual sense, I'll see if we can pick this up in the camera, but this particular exist that I've got here, I've, I'm seeing about four to five millimeters of spool. To me, that's starting to indicate that this is getting close to being um, requiring some new line. So I'm starting, I've lost a bit of line over the last couple of years on that particular reel, whereas a very similar sized exist, which is well spooled, is this guy there. So we're not seeing anywhere near as much of the spool visible, I only seen a few millimeters. So that's one good way to also visually inspect. And I'll show you guys the 2003 there. So the 2003, again, just a couple of millimeters, that to me looks perfectly spooled. In terms of how we spool these up, I'm a huge fan of going to my local tackle store, Complete Angler in Moorabbin, having a chat to the guys, picking up a few little bits and pieces, and at the same time saying, hey, do you mind, I've got some braid, or well, purchase some braid there, and just using their machine to tightly spool up these reels. So I find that that's the best way to get a really tight, compact um, winding, I guess, or spooling up of my reels. Um, so the majority of them I get done at the shops. If I haven't got anything to buy, the guys often say they'll do each reel for about five bucks. It takes them 10, 15 minutes it's so a little bit of mucking around to get the backing right, which leads me into the other question that Peter had. There's two types of backing that I often use. The first is if I have a really, really shallow spool and I wanna get the maximum amount of braid on, 
I'll just do a single loop of electrical tape around. So what that tape does is it takes away some of that slippery nature of the spool and it allows the braid to bite in and doesn't slip at all. But then that also doesn't add any additional sort of size to the spool and it allows you to put as much um, braided line on. And the second option is to use really light monofilament or old fluorocarbon that you've got laying around of a very thin diameter, so say three, four, six pound, and just doing enough wraps just to cover the bottom, no more. So again, you're not filling out that spool and you're allowing yourself to put as much braided line on. Um, in terms of the 2500 size or 2504 reels, you, generally speaking, you can get full 150 meters on without a problem. The 2003s, 2004s, they're a little bit shallower, a little bit smaller in diameter and overall size. And you're looking at roughly 120 to 135 meters. So I hope that helps. And finally, the other question around leader length. So for me personally, as a rough guide, knowing where I cast and where my, how much line I've got at the end of the rod tip every time I go to cast, I really prefer to have my leader knot above the spool. So I want that to be outside of the spool. If I'm running lighter line classes, I don't mind if that leader knot's on the spool, even with a double uni, I don't tend to have any issues. But once I'm rigging up and I start to wind the leader onto the, um, through the rod guides and onto the reel, I try and just make sure that I've got, you know, 10 to 20 centimeters above the reel where my leader knot sits, and then I don't tend to have any issues and that equates to about a metre and a half to two metres of leader. If I'm fishing places where the water's really clear, um, you know, it's really sunny, no wind, I need a really subtle presentation, then I'll run a longer leader of a lighter breaking strain of three or four pound, and I'll, um, I'll double it to something like four or five metres. But I do have the occasional line management issue with that leader not being a couple of spools down, a couple of turns, um, down on the reel and as it comes off and through the guides depending on what type of leader knot you use You may have a few challenges, but just see how you go um, It's not normally an issue, but it's also in Victoria due to the way that you know our river systems run and We don't really need that really long light leader too often So that's why I find roughly two meters of four to six pound leader is perfect for me and the best way for me is just above the reel so that it doesn't get caught as you go to cast. So Pete, hope that helps. And everyone else, I hope you enjoyed that little tip as well. And thank you very much for Peter for sending that question in. Uh, if you've got any other questions about braided lines or fluorocarbon, please feel free to leave a comment or uh, send me a message on one of the social media channels. Hope you guys enjoyed this little video. Just wanted to talk to you quickly about what's worked well for me, what hasn't, and hopefully save you some of those pitfalls and uh, challenges with different lines. And hopefully it, you know, it improves and um, allows for an easier choice when uh, looking at leaders or braid next time. Hope you enjoyed the video and I'll see you guys next time. Cheers.